Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus this day, and we're incredibly grateful that we get to come into the house of God and hear from your word. And Lord, we would ask that you would develop us to be all that you would have us to be. And Lord, we'll give you the praise, give you the glory, and give you all the honor. We bless all the churches in the Inland Empire that are preaching the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. There are our brothers and our sisters. Why in the world wouldn't we want them to be successful? God bless our Baptist brothers and Lutherans and Methodist Episcopalian, Charismatics and Pentecostals. Thank you for Calvary chapels, Lord, and Harvest and all the great churches that are out there, our Adventist brothers and Catholic brothers. At no time, Lord, do we think of ourselves as better than them. But Lord, we see ourselves as co-laborers, workers together in one field building your kingdom, not a man's, but yours. And God, we give you the praise, give you the glory, give you the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. Everybody say amen. You know, Pastor Dan's been going line upon line, precept upon precept in the word of God in the book of Colossians. Today we're going back there. So get your Bible out and go to the first chapter of Colossians. I'll give you the title of the message in just a minute. And then we're going to talk about some things and you're going to understand some principles. It is absolutely ridiculous for anybody to go to church and not get something out of church. Where you walk out of a church and you say to yourself, my goodness, I just had an encounter with God in one way or the other. And this is the word of the Lord and God wants to speak to you today about your future. Now, are you gonna hear what I'm gonna say to you because it's very important for you to listen. You wanna daydream, go daydream during lunch today. But we're gonna feed you the word of God today and you need to listen. So you don't let your minds wander off because I'm not gonna let you do that. When you do that, by the way, that is really rude to the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of things that we don't wanna do is one of the things we don't wanna do is the Holy Spirit knows who you are, knows where you're at, and what you're doing all the time. And sometimes we don't think anybody will notice, anybody will see. Sometimes you're texting when you think everybody's thinking you are looking at the scripture on your phone. That is rude to the Holy Spirit. You don't wanna do that. Here's another rude thing that we don't want to do is get up at the end of the service because you're finished and now you can get out early and get to the restaurant early or get out of the traffic early. Let me tell you something. When you leave early like that and the Holy Spirit wants to drop and do something, it becomes an annoying thing and it becomes, um, uh, if you will, abusive to the Spirit of God. Don't do things like that. So today, let's enjoy the word of the Lord together. I think you'll find it absolutely incredible, fascinating, if you will, in the first chapter of the text of Colossians. Go with me, if you will, to a title. Let me put it up. If you're making notes, you ought to be making notes every week so you, through the week, you can refer back to them. The, it's an interesting title because it doesn't really make a lot of sense when you read it. Benefits from your fullness. In other words, there are benefits when you're operating life in the fullness of God. And this is, if you will, God's wanting you to see this, wanting you to understand it, wanting you to find yourself in a place where you are full and not empty. So many people that are Christians, let me say it again. So many people that are Christians live life as if they are empty of the things of God. And when you live life in the fullness of the things of God, man, the blessings and the anointing and the favor and the insight and the wisdom that you need to live life starts to come about and you start to operate. But we oftentimes think that we're okay with God where we're at. And I'm telling you, no one has arrived yet. You might get to heaven, but you might live real stinky until you get to heaven. Or you can live full of the things of God, which is a call and a choice you make, listen to this, and live blessed out of your mind in every area, home, finance, dreams, vision, destiny, future, marriages, children, whatever it might possibly be, you live absolutely blessed because you made the choice to go deep into the things of God instead of staying on the surface. Most people who attend American churches today stay on the surface, they're getting saved, but they live really crappy lives. And you know it and I know it too. So here you are, you're Christians. Why live an empty life 
when you can live a full life. You know what I'm saying? You've got one life to live. Why not get blessed? Why not have the favor of God? Why not have the wisdom of God? Why not have the plan of God? Why not have the anointing of God? Why not have the favor of God in every area of your life? What, listen to me. Why not be filled with his fullness to the place where you're overrunning with the joy of the Lord? My goodness, why would anybody not want that? And yet all through scripture we find there are people that call themselves Christians that live a substandard relationship because they don't allow themselves to be filled with the things of God. Is anybody listening? Yes. For an example, let me give you a better thought, a better example. You'll, you'll enjoy this. Um, let's say you had a lot of money in the bank. After hours, you wanted to go access the ATM machine. And as you access and walk up to the ATM machine, you put your card in, you know how it works. And then it says, give me your PIN number. And you say, what PIN number? I don't have a PIN number. And it says, give me your PIN number. So you say, I don't have a PIN number. What are they asking for? I don't understand that. Wait a minute. You talk back to the machine. I've got money in this bank. You talk back to the machine. Give me some of my money. It's mine. I put it in. It's under my name. But I didn't have the access ability. I didn't have the PIN number to withdraw what was mine. A lot of people live that way with God. They have all that God will give to them, but they never access what God has for them. And until you make God to a place where you can access the blessings and the things that God has for you, you live a substandard, empty life. And so we live our lives as Christians. Yes, when you die, <laughs> you get to go to heaven. How much fun is that going to be? But while you're here on earth, you're broke down, busted, disgusted, never getting by, even frustrated with God because everybody else around you that you know, they seem to go further than you. Why? Because you didn't have the pin number. Now here's what most people don't understand. In order for you to get to where you need to be to be in the fullness of God, here's the pin number. And a lot of people treat it like it's nothing. When in fact, this book is a book about life. This book is how to live life to the emptiest, no, to the fullest. Let me tell you something kind of fascinating. Recently I've been seeing, and I've seen this all my life, you know I'm in my 70s, I can go all the way back to the days of Marilyn Monroe. And I've seen celebrity movie stars and rock stars, people of great wealth and great talent, kill themselves. Suicide has been something I have seen every single way in my life. I've seen it from every direction. Every one of us, most of us in here, when we hear about a person who has a lot of money, a lot of recognition, a lot of acceptance, a lot of approval of man, when we hear about them committing suicide, I mean, these people are so famous that if they go to Disneyland, all of Disneyland stops and surrounds them. They can't even go through. Even the park itself will change its day's function for these people because they are so celebrity-oriented. They have everything, all the millions of dollars anybody could ever want. They know how to handle the millions. They know how to handle the people. They love the approval and recognition and acceptance of man, and yet they still kill themselves. Why is that? Here's why. Listen to me. Because they don't know how to handle life. And life is completely different. It's not found in worldly successes and material things. Life is completely different. And how to access with the proper PIN number life is finding out how this works and applying it in your life. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So when I put the title up, could I just have one more time, guys, back there, please? And where it says benefits from your <clears throat> fullness, we're going to talk about how important it is for you to make an effort all the time. By the way, let me just say this to you. Every great church and great pastor 
ought to be the heartbeat of every pastor is to get their congregation into the fullness of the things of God. If you don't have that, you don't have a great pastor. You have a love boat captain. And there's a big difference between a love boat captain, amen, and a great pastor. A great pastor will get you somewhere with God. You're going to go to church for a reason. You're not going there just to do your little penance before Lord. Like you get little brownie points because you went. Because you're not going to get anything from God. What you sow, you reap. And if you don't sow the fullness of God in your life, you reap nothing. Does anybody listen? It doesn't matter if you're a Christian because Christian is going to get you to heaven, but it's not going to get you the blessings. A lot of people sit back and say, oh, just give it to me, God. I'm a Christian. You know, I'm a Christian. God says, I've already given it to you. Here's your pin number. Use your pin number. We're going, what pin number? I'm yelling at the machine. I got it. I got it. <laughs> they come and haul you away. And plus, they're videotaping you. And the next morning, they're all laughing at you, dude. <laughs> Colossians, first chapter, verse number 19. A lot of what we're going to do is not only, I'm going to read it to you and things such as that. We're talking about benefits f- from your fullness. In Colossians, first chapter, verse number 19. It's an interesting verse. I'll put it uh, overhead, all the verses today, so you can easily understand what we're talking about. We're talking about you understanding the importance of fullness, get this, and then start working for it. That's what we're here for, to help you to do it. Why? Why? So you can get blessed. You can be happy. You can be filled. Man, what a great opportunity. Most times people go to church and never hear such things. For it pleased the Father, verse number 19 says. I love anything that pleases the Father, don't you? For it pleased the Father. Wow. I'd like to live my life pleasing the Father. Jesus lived his life completely pleasing the Father. He says the words that I speak, they're not mine, but he that sent me. When you see me, you see the Father. That in him, speaking, notice the capital H there, in him meaning Jesus, in him, Jesus, all the fullness should dwell. All the fullness, the fullness of everything that is of God is gonna dwell because they're in him. See those two little words in him? I should have highlighted them a little different so they could call attention to it. Because a lot of people don't understand. Because what you do is this is not just because you're a Christian, but whether or not what you're drawing from is in him. I am in him, and because I'm in him, now the fullness of my life is going to come from him. So I should have highlighted those words in him. I wonder if I could get the guys to just make them pink or something pretty for us today. But, oh... Is that cool? Come on now, somebody. And so here you see, in him. And now we're not talking about just being in yourself. We're not talking about just being in church. (laughs) I went to church today, bless me, God. No, it doesn't work that way. I need to be where? No, oh wait, am I alone here? Is there five of you in this room? Well, let's talk just for a moment. Let me try that again, okay? I'm gonna try it over on this side. So I need to be where? Yeah. Ah. And there's a big difference between just being in church, being in yourself, just reading your Bible, or whether or not you're in him. Because the fullness, you could actually make this statement, <clears throat> and my translation of this statement's kind of cool. You could say that the fullness of life comes from him. Let me say it again. The fullness of life comes from him. So here's what we're gonna talk about just for a couple of times and I'm gonna give you some more insight. Remember, we're, we're reading this tremendous verse. Verse number 20 comes along, it's pretty powerful too, in him, it's just so great. It says, and by him, speaking of in him, to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things of the earth or things of the heaven. Here's Jesus making a statement. I'm going to bring it all together in me. Having made peace through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, if that's the victory that's ahead of us, then we ought to be operating in it. Now, God wants an abundant life for you. 
Jesus comes back. I didn't say it. He says, I have come to give you what? Life and give it more, a what? Abundantly. So the abundant life is there. We just need to use oftentimes this, if you will, password, or if you will, passcode, or the PIN number in order to access what God has given to us. Really quite cool. In him, here's number one I wanted to share with you. I won't make a numbers on this. In him, the fullness of his plan and his will. Whew. I mean, that's a bizarre statement. When I'm in him, full of him, his plan comes alive in my life. His plan doesn't come in alive in my life because I'm pretty or smart or handsome. And I love myself. The plan comes alive because I'm in him in his fullness. I'm accessed him to get to where I need to be. So all of a sudden we find out something. His plan and his will supersedes everything. Let me just say it like this. You become so incredibly intelligent, you can figure out life. And you can figure out the world. And that's what other people have not been able to do. Yes, they've been successful in celebrities. Yes, they had millions of dollars. Yes, they were approved and recognized by everybody. Yes, they had reached the top of the plateau. And they killed themselves because they couldn't figure out life. And most Christians today can't really figure out life because they haven't gotten into his plan and his will, they're staying in their plan and their will. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be that way. So important for us to see that in his fullness of his plan, fullness of his will gives me insight in how to deal with life on this earth and in this world. I now know why people do what they do. Man, does that make a difference? I know why the politicians are where they're at and they say what they say. I understand business and what goes on. When you understand the world around you, it changes how you operate and it changes everything about your life. Totally a cool experience. Is anybody, anybody listening? It doesn't come because you're empty. It comes because you're full. Wow, that's just so amazing to me. And Colossians, but I don't want to have you turn there yet. Let me talk to you about this. You're going to stay in Colossians because I want to show you, show you something. In verse number eight of the first chapter of Colossians, we see something that takes place. Here's Paul writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he's telling the church at Colossae how wonderful they are and how much they've heard about how great things they're doing. Hey, that's a pretty cool thing. If Paul the Apostle writes something good and positive, wouldn't you be satisfied with your life? Hold on. And at the end of verse number eight, four words says, because you love in the spirit. Because you loved in the spirit. Now listen to this. If loving in the spirit is the ultimate goal of Christians then we could all say, wow, that's our goal, let's reach it. But for some reason, Paul stops. He says, because you loved in the spirit, verse eight, <clears throat> and then he comes up with verse nine that says, now I wanna show you and tell you how to go to the next level. Most people that are Christians in American churches, if they just loved in the spirit or through the spirit, you would find themselves being satisfied with where they're at. But yet Paul says, I'm not satisfied with where you're at because you loved in the spirit and you've done all these great things. Now, I'm gonna tell you what I really want for you and what I'm praying for you. So I find it interesting that Paul wouldn't let them get away with just stopping at loving in the spirit. And in verse number nine, he comes along and he says, that you may walk we're, listen to this, in verse number nine, it says this, for this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. So here's, since I heard that you love in the spirit, 
listen to this, I'm praying for you, and we haven't stopped doing that. Wow, that's great, Paul. Thank you so much. If he did that for us, we'd all think we had arrived. And to ask that you may be, maybe, maybe, see the word may? I should have highlighted the word may. That word may, mm, because it says so much. It gives us options that we ask that you may be filled. It should be pink if you can get that word. Oh, there it is. Be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Because I can love in the spirit. I can go to church, be a Christian, and not be filled until I get into some other depth be filled with the knowledge of his will. Remember, we're talking about how important his will is and how important his plan is. And it says this. He says, and spiritual understanding. I understand spiritually what's going on around me. I can now deal with the world. Is anybody listening? And it's so important for us to see this. It's right in our own face. The word may is an interesting word. Everybody say the word may. Okay, the word may means it's your option. He didn't come along and say, I'm praying it's going to happen to you. It means it could happen to you. I hope it does. How do you do this? By what you choose. I need to learn how to use my PIN number to access the fullness that God would have for me, not just stay where I'm at as a Christian. Is anybody listening to me? What's wrong with the church today is we stayed where we're at. And we do church. And we have a little social meetings. It's one thing I love about the vision of this church. Pastor Dan has made it so clear. And it's so phenomenal. What a great vision. His vision is this. Listen to this. Because it's the heartbeat of God. Is this vision is a multicultural experience. A lot of you don't understand what that means. This is a real multicultural church. I was recently in a church, it was all white people preaching, and they had one black couple, and the guy come up to me afterwards, the pastor says, yes, we're multicultural. And I said, man, you don't have no idea what multicultural is, unless you look like your city. So we're here for every culture, we're here for every upbringing, background, we're every every person, old, young, we're here for everybody, why? Because the gospel is for everybody. And Pastor Dan's got this phenomenal vision to reach them all. And so here's what I'm saying to you. That's the very will. That's the very plan of God. I just love it. How to get there? Because he makes, I may do this. I'm going to get in and do something about it. So cool. Well, verse number 10 comes along. It says, that you may walk worthy of the Lord Fully pleasing him. Remember we talked about pleasing God. Being fruitful in every good works. And in here he's seen in the knowledge of God. Wow, how powerful is that? Second thing I just wanted to point out to you is this. In him, everybody say in him. This is not about just being in church. This is about being in him. Thank God church like this is going to amplify what God would have you to be and go. Don't just stay the same. Don't just think you're okay. None of us have arrived except for salvation. We get to go to heaven. But some of us are real babies in dealing with worldly issues. So here it is. In him is the fullness of God. You say, fullness of God. What does that mean? What does that look like? Good question. I like what Ephesians, the third chapter, says. In Ephesians, the third chapter, it says these words. To know the love of Christ. Here he is, saying it again. Which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. It is the desire of God for you to be, not just have a little bit full, but to be filled with all that God has for you in mankind today. That's an amazing expression right there. That in itself is just literally bizarre. Verse 20 comes along and it says this. 
It says, and to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think, this is what it looks like, according to the power that works in us. Yes. I, you know those words, according to the power that works in us, is that too much that we could highlight those, maybe a different color like pink or something like that? Because uh, I want to rant to him, remember, in him, who is able. See the word able, could you? Uh, could you highlight that word able to? The word able up there means he is his ability. Who is, has the ability to do what? Exceedingly, <laughs> abundantly, <laughs> that which we could ask or think. I, I went to God one time. I said, God, you're asking me to believe you that you're going to do more than I could even ask or think. I can ask and I can think. <laughs> big. Now, I'm an older man, so let me tell you the truth. I just sat down with God, start writing out stuff. God, I'd like to see you do this. I'd like to see you do that. One of which you're sitting in right now. I found that list 20 years later. And every single thing that was on that list had come to pass and more above what you could ask or think. How many of you have stopped your thinking? But it's according to, that word according to, the likeness of, a likeness of the power that works in you. You say, well, the power that works in me is the Holy Spirit. Yes, but will you let it out? Yeah. Let him out. Start believing him. Start getting into this. Get filled. See, because I know Christians that have a little Holy Spirit on the inside. Little Holy Spirit on the inside is that they deal with life and they, you know, the, the things that they do in life is as important, if you will, as the power and the things of God. But here we see something different. You can either have a little, because the word may comes up, you can even have a little or you can have a lot. So he has the ability to be on everything. By the way, there was only one thing on that list that I crossed off. I, one of them was, God, someday I want to have a motor home. I rented a motor home. We went on vacation when Jesse was like a year and a half old. I think you were a year and a half old. Took the kids on a motor home. Got back from that vacation, I scratched it off. It was still there, man. I never want to be in a motorhome again. Now, if you want to be in a motorhome, God bless you. I'm the guy going by you at 60. Boom. But I want you to know, now I love you, appreciate you. You have more tolerance for life than I have. Man. But guess what? Everything was fulfilled on that list except that motorhome. And don't even give me a motorhome. <laughs> don't want no part of it. It says, now to him who is able to exceed, that's what the fullness of God is, looks like. Wouldn't you like to live that kind of a life? Yeah. Beyond <laughs> what you could ask or think? Oh, come on, God. What's God doing? He is actually telling you, and he's challenging you, that he is a God that can go be his powers greater than yours. All you have to do is be filled with him. And guess what? And by the way, may I say something? When you're filled with him, you don't ask for junk. The catch 22 is in him. <laughs> Not in self. In him. Is anybody listening? Kind of fun, huh? Well, <clears throat> I loved all of this. And I found it absolutely fascinating, but I want to share with you something very important, because there are, what was the title of this message? <gasps> Let's see, benefits from your fullness. So here's the part of the message that literally is going to stimulate you to start getting into the fullness of God. And I found the fullness of God is attained by giving away to God. I give myself away. I give my time away. I give my means away. The more I get 
out of me and in him, the greater my life has become and the fuller I have become. And there are benefits and that's what God's talking about. Remember Pastor Dan, last time we were together, Pastor Dan ministered this, where Ephesians 5th chapter verse, I think it's 18, where he says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't be filled with the things of the world, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Can I ask you something? If you're filled, why would he tell you to be filled? Is that interesting? Because you can have the Holy Spirit and not be filled. According to the power that works in you, how big is God inside you? Come on. How big is he? Is he just a little God? Little G God? Or is he a all everything God? See, that's the point. Four benefits I think you'll like. Number one, I love this one, fullness of joy. When you are full of God, you're full of his joy. When you're full of his joy, you're full of what? Does anybody remember? The joy of the Lord is my what? Strength. So guess what? I'm full of joy when you're full of God. You know what joy does? Doesn't matter what other people do. I've been applying this in my life. Other people can disappoint me. Other people can say things that are hurtful. Other people can live lives their way. Bless them for it. But it can't rob my joy. It might rob my moments of frustration. But as soon as I get back into my, in him, my joy comes back. And it's so neat to live your life with the fullness of joy. And a lot of people don't understand what that means. Joy is something that literally continues all the time. Why? Because when something ugly comes at you, you just flip the page back to him, in him. And when I flip the page mentally back to him, I'm back to smiling, I'm back to enjoying life. When, when I hear what the politicians are doing or not doing, when I hear the world is failing, when I hear people that are voting weirdly in the in New York State and, and electing a communist into office, oh my goodness sakes, what's happening to America? And then I, I stop and I get back into joy because I'm in him, and I know his plan, I know his will, remember that from the beginning, gets me to where I need to be, and I'm filled with the joy. Is that cool? And I love this in John 15, 11. I'll just put it up on the overhead for you. Is that okay? John 15, 11. These things I've spoken unto you. Listen to what Jesus said. These things I've spoken unto you, that my joy, aren't you happy, the people you know, are not responsible for giving you the joy that you need. <laughs> Hello? Have you ever been on a freeway? I mean, how about some, anybody, had, anybody ha, had road rage? No, I'm not talking about just somebody else. I'm talking about you. Well, let me tell you something about road rage in California. Man, you look straight ahead and bless them. If you don't look straight ahead and bless them, I'm going to be doing a service over you. You know what I'm saying? This country's gotten crazy. So I thank God I'm not looking for the world's joy. I'm looking for his joy. He says, and I spoke to that my joy may, what I love the word remain. I ought to put the word remain in a great verse. Maybe you ought to color that blood red might rain, remain in you and that my joy may. You understand what I'm saying? Is anybody getting a picture of this? I mean, this is kind of cool, isn't it? So that my joy may be full. Every day you can live full. You know, you come home, meals burned. Uh, not that Debbie would ever do that. I lied in the pulpit. And, um, you know, when she's funny. I mean, she, she burns everything. And when the kids were little, when the fire alarm went off inside the kitchen, we knew dinner was ready. You know? But if you, if you, if you tell her, I'm going to bust you one. I'm going to lose my jaw. And so anyway, here's the thing. 
Don't tell her I, don't tell her I said that. You gotta delete that out of there. And, uh, and so, uh, so anyway, my, my point being is this, I don't have to let anything upset me. It might upset me for the time, but then I get back in him and I got my joy back. And life's now, see, and that's called, listen to this, listen to this. That's called dealing with life and that's why people commit suicide because they don't know what God has for them. And listen, even if they call themselves Christians, but nobody's taught them how to be the things of God, to be full, not to be empty. Because if you're empty as a Christian, all you're going to do is live a miserable life. Not going to make it. Is anybody listening? So cool. Number two, fullness of blessing. I love this. Fullness of blessing. What the heck does that mean? Remember in Malachi, third chapter, verse number 10. Now watch this. I'll just pop it up and read it to you from the overhead. Here's the book of Malachi. It says, bring all your tithes into the storehouse. I love the word storehouse because it's where you store up stuff, right? That there may be food. And then he defines what a storehouse is. My house. Watch this. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there's not room enough to receive it. Now, you got a little touch of this. Did you know that? You have a little touch of this, not room enough to receive it. If we went and looked at your garage, it's full of junk, you came and get your car in there. That's a little touch, but God wants to go way beyond your garage. And not room enough to receive, is that not fullness? So blessings to fullness. And I stand before you as a living memorial. Man, in my 70s, I'm telling you the truth. Deborah and I have done everything in the world. We haven't done everything right. We've never been perfect. But that's what's good about this is God's perfect. And he's just looking for somebody that'll just submit to him and do the best they can until they grow in maturity. May I say this to you? We are so blessed. We want for nothing. How cool is that? Third thing I wanted to share with you, and I think this is really great because we were talking about benefits. Benefits, fullness of life. I mean, to have life full. Have life full means everything is going the way it should go. And if it isn't, you know the results of what's going to be and why it got that way. So the issue is no longer an issue. You've already dealt with it in Christ. And it's so cool that life could be full. Can you imagine, some of you have never known what a full life is. Here's my suggestion. Get to church. Learn about God. Get an understanding of his word. Put yourself aside. Go for God. That's what a great church is all about. We'll teach you how to live life to its fullness in the things of God, and God will bless you. In fact, the Bible says in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added onto you. But God must be first, and then God's fullness starts to come. Wow, how good that is. I love this. In Psalms 23, verse 5, Psalms 23 is everybody's favorite psalm, but verse 5, the writer makes an expression that is really cool. It says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Now watch this. Tell me, this is not fullness. My cup, my life runs over. That which houses me runs over. If you want that, I want you to have it too, and so do the pastors of this church. If you want that, all you have to do is come on, let's go. We're going on a ride. The church is going somewhere. You can get in and find out about the fullness of life, that every day you don't live in questioning and frustration, but you live in understanding and knowledge, and you know where you're going, how to go there, because God's will has been expressed to you. Man, that's the fullness of life. If God spoke to you today, come on, give the Lord a, a great big praise. You know that? How cool is that? So neat. 